Released March 25th, Happy Hour definitely feels like Season 6's Valentine's Day episode. This one is like an evolution chart of relationships, and we're gonna get to that later. Crete's killing it at DDR, and Andy hates drama. You love drama. I know, I do, right? <laughs> I'm Chris, and welcome to The Office Field Guide. I'm reviewing every episode of The Office ever, and today, we're talking about happy hour. Come on. Go! 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 Warning, warning, warning! I understand nothing. This is a BJ Novak episode whose dad ghost wrote Lee Iacocca's autobiography. Have you read Lee Iacocca's? It's classic. Read it, I own it. But no, I have not read it. Here is to Mr. Iacocca and his failed experiment, the DeLorean. <coughs> and I just love to imagine Novak's brain spinning with ideas with this setup. You know what we haven't done in a while? Happy hour. I like how sage Daryl is when it comes to his advice with Oscar. Look, just be straight with me, man. You can be gay with Matt, just be straight with me. I think he pretty much sees Oscar for who he is. Matt's a pretty good looking dude, don't you think? And the setup is one thing, and it's kind of great. But this episode comes to life when everyone arrives for the happy hour. And there's two sides of the coin there. Chuck E. Cheese? Oh, God, I'm so sick of Chuck E. Cheese. On one side, we get a lot of ancillary characters back on screen with Coleman's Isabel. Oh, negative. Universal donor. Universal donor. Daily's Matt. Are you doing anything later tonight? I don't know. I'm free. If you hear of anything going on, let me know. Schaefer's Bob Vance. I love going to bars with Bob. I tend to wear something low cut, get men to flirt with me, and Bob beats him up. And Tenor's Glenn. No, you don't. But on the other side of that coin, we have a ton of drama. I don't want a drama. We have the Shroot Love Triangle. Whack! <laughs> we have Mike being himself, mostly killing it, in kind of this heartwarming way. So you work with Pam and Jim? Oh, no, no. Pam and Jim work for me, and if they win, they are fine. <laughs> I should hope not. <laughs> no. That's wrecked as soon as he realizes he's on a date. Hi, I'm Date Mike. Nice to meet me. How do you like your eggs in the morning? More on that later. Aaron and Andy wanting to keep their relationship secret in a way that just feels very middle schoolish. Can you imagine what people would say if they saw us dancing together? Oh, I know. They'd be like, what's up with those two? Oh, and reading between the lines here, Stanley seems to be courting two ladies on the side here. Whoa, a lot of Stanley Hudson's in here. No, it's Michael Scott. And I thought I was just making that up, but I'm not. It's actually credited that way on IMDb. The more you know. It seems like Novak had a field day with creating cringe, like a kid just playing with dolls. So stupid. <laughs> so uncomfortable, right? <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> and at this point in the series, that's kind of what The Office is. We have well-established characters, and we just keep throwing new scenarios at them to see how it all plays out. It makes for great comedy, but slightly less agency is given to our characters, and it can feel like nothing really matters. Yeah, why don't you send the bill to 23 I don't care lanes, oh. Grant, Pennsylvania. Which is a writing problem for any series that goes on as long as The Office has at this point. I do love the choice to get these warehouse guys more involved in the show, though. Go Oscar! Go gay warehouse guy! Kide's been hiding in the background for quite a while now. Last year, I actually had the chance to go and hang out with Hide, the nicest dude ever. I also got to do an interview with him at that venue, and he told me that he used to be a limo driver in Japan, but came to the States looking for something new. He signed up to be an extra. Extra, extra, read all about it. Newspapers for sale. Got the call for the office as a warehouse guy, and really it was just in the background until this episode. As he told the story, BJ Novak wrote this entire sequence for him, and he was just super grateful for it. My big secret, I killed Yaksabas on purpose. I could search him. So best! By the way, he still knows this speech super well. How to search him, number one. Straight in hand. 
one day Yakusaba meet new heart. I do operation, but mistake. Yakusaba story. Yakusaba very mad. I hide his symbol. Come to America. No English. No food. No money. Dark Kimicho. Now Yakusaba has American cat and you. Start saving that. My big sin. I killed Yakusaba. Of course, I could toss out the best. Also, he, he signed my book, so that's cool. The office book. Getting a lot of stuff off the shelf today. And speaking of extras, what's going on with this dude? I know like extras, your point is to kind of blend into the background, not stand out, but this guy's eyes. It's like something else going on there. But on that note, one of the things I did appreciate about this episode is there are so many people in this little space. And our characters are kind of just sprinkled around in the background throughout most of the scenes. Like I was going by like frame by frame at one point in this episode just to see if I could find Stanley's girlfriends and you know, I forgot they were like right there. But at one point I found Hide at the bar trying to figure out what was going on with Michael. And this place is so crowded which again is why I duck out of every happy hour type thing as I can. Because you're antisocial, Oscar. You're kind of a snob. And I just noticed that this place's name is like a play on Dave and Buster's. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Let's go to the deeper meaning. What does a bean mean? Someone please explain it to Cap. <laughs> This is so bad. <laughs> Who wears stuff? Sorry if you wear stuff like this. It doesn't fit me. I mean, it fits me, like it fits my head, but it doesn't fit my personality. No way. Arguably doesn't fit Michael's personality either. Anyway, deeper meaning. So maybe one of my new favorite things to do for this series should be going and seeing what IMDb reviews there are for this episode. He said 110 episodes into the series. I can't go back in the past, guys, but I found a doozy here, and that's where all this is coming from. I'm not gonna say the guy's name because A, that's not really my style to throw shade directly at people, but B, I'm not really sure if his name is short for something. I'm pretty sure DM does GB means something kind of sexual. And sometimes I wish I had acting chops. Acting! Because I can't faithfully recreate my reaction to when I found this review written by a human being, presumably. It appears that the website has become alive. This happens to computers and robots sometimes. And that has written over a thousand reviews on IMDb. And these aren't like minor, huh, I don't like it type reviews. Almost every one I saw were paragraphs long. And spoiler, he reviews a lot more episodes of Dragnet than you might think. Okay, his happy hour episode review though, its title is Attempt to Manipulate Michael Scott Backfires. Some companies still know how business is done. Great episode, astute depiction of a man who refuses to be manipulated by others who want to take advantage of his good nature to make social points at his expense. Once Michael learns he's on a date, he takes decisive action to discredit Pam and Jim, who did not inform Michael of their plan to hook him up with one of Pam's girlfriends. This takes place at an office happy hour organized by one of the employees who wants to use the event to try to establish a gay connection with another employee. <laughs> <laughs> Office politics run rampant as everyone is using this social event to promote their personal and selfish goals, all except Michael. This episode depicts the characters of The Office at their most ridiculous, except for Michael, who's acting out is a form of passive aggressive behavior that completely thwarts Jim and Pam's attempt to use Michael to score points at Michael's expense. Instead of being open and honest with Michael, they give Michael cause to act out. I have cause. It is because I hate him. In this respect, Pam and Jim totally misjudged Michael. Michael does not need their help to meet women, nor did he ask for their help. Would you like to be our fourth? That would be sublime. I don't need your help. Sadly, although a spoof, 
This episode, and the series in general, provide an accurate depiction of the more negative and reprehensible aspects of human nature. <laughs> I feel like that review is an accurate depiction of the more negative and reprehensible aspects of human nature. Anyway, I guess that's like one way to read Michael's actions here. I'm not really sure why I used the phrase gay connection. Oh, hello, Oscar. How was your gaycation? Okay, that's all too much. Here's the thing. I think this episode is much simpler on the surface than yeah, that guy was making it out to be. I know I was kidding about how Novak likes to mess with those action figures and create cringe, but he seems to thrive on subverting expectations and exploring comedy and cringe in those situations. Like, take some big hits for Novak throughout the series. Diversity Day subverts expectations with diversity training. So I'm eating it ass oh, no. I take care of my kids! Wait, wait, wait. Is always want that's credit stop, for something they supposed it. to do. It. Sexual harassment, mostly the same thing as Diversity Day, but you know, with sexual harassment. Mm, elf. Thanks, Kevin. The fire subvert the boss new guy relationship. Well, I would definitely have sex with Ryan. Safety training, mostly the same as Diversity Day, but with safety training. But it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It would be the worst somebody, thing in the world. It the would the very much so. It's man. a big red trash what contract, you, that's and not that's a very trash dangerous. Trash okay. Okay. Right, 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 right. And I think Novak gets these characters in a way that I'm not sure everyone does. What's the only thing worse than one HR rep? Two HR reps. You get me. While I hate everything that happens on screen here, because I really root for Michael Scott, interactions like this force me to. What am I thinking right now? Are you thinking that I said ESP? Yes. Yeah. Ah, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> awesome. That's why this sequence with Date Mike is so uncomfortable. Michael's like the abdominal snowman from Looney Tunes. He's got this beautiful thing in the palm of his hands and he wants it so badly, he screws it up. And I will hug him and pet him and squeeze him. Michael handles this pivot with all of the finesse of Kevin with a taco. Whenever I try to make a taco, I get too excited and I crush it. Primero taco. Thank you. <laughs> And I guess that tryhards is a thing that people call people now, I guess mostly gamers. Like, I hear my kids yell that at the screen when someone kills them in Apex or Fortnite or something. It's like a weird slam to me. Like, like I would have been upset with myself for sucking, but now they're pissed at other people for trying harder to beat them in a game. I, I don't really know. I did ask her if this is the right word use. Like, Michael's being a tryhard here. You got a problem? Yes, homelessness. Did I, is that, is that? Either way, I don't think he's projecting anything here. I think he's intentional in what he's trying to do here, which is just try so hard to be that idea of cool, the kind of guy that Todd Packer is. You a big William Hung fan? Why does everybody ask me that? Who the hell is that? To try to score this chick at the bar. There's something so smooth and comforting when Michael is being like a charming version of himself early in this episode. And then again, he seems to be killing it with Annie from Caroline in the City because at that point, even though he's in date Mike form, he is being himself, just in a different emotional state. I own a Chrysler. Shut up. No, you shut up. Now, with Dr. Cooper from Dexter sees in date Mike at that point in time, I'm not 100% sure. It, this one feels forced, like the writers needed him to be there. It might just be the right person at the right place at the right time, striking the right chords. What's your drink? Scotch and Splenda. What? Tastes like Splenda, gets drunk like Scotch. So I think the message of the episode is just that normal sitcom PSA of Be Yourself. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andrew Bernard, and I've been on two dates with Aaron Hannon, and they went well, and there will probably be more. Thank you. Be kind and be like a charming, kind version of yourself and, you know, be appropriate and don't be Kevin in this episode. Mommy! I don't think that's good. But with that, let's rate this thing. This is the worst. Stanley, 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 Stanley. Okay. Stanley.
Stanley. Hey, so take a minute to like this video. And if you haven't, subscribe. Those little things are free for you, but they help me out a ton. And also, if you're interested, we're live streaming the last Friday of every month this year. And so the next one's going to be, like, depending on when this comes out, tomorrow night. So be on the lookout. We're going to have some trivia tomorrow night, uh, prizes, and all sorts of stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. Check it out. So I was on IMDb earlier. Office fans are weird. Like, dude gave this episode a 10 out of 10 for that date mic response. Like, another review was, this isn't a good episode of The Office. I think they could have done a lot better. 8 out of 10. So, see what I mean when I say that my ratings don't mathematically line up with The Office curve? Anyway, the cold opening. I uh, made a sale. Oh, yeah, sitting on your big fat butt. That's called having a fat butt, Michael. Mm, no, no, it's yeah, sedentary. Yeah, that's, that's fat butt disease. That's what you suffer from? Yeah, no. fat butt disease, Michael. Is honestly up there with one of the most memorable ones in the series for me. Essentially what we have here is one of those stories where a mother lifts a car to save her baby. Everyone in the office is jumping into Michael's craziness here. And there's a bit of a subverting expectations even going on this early with like 20 something push ups. 25 and one girl push ups. This is pretty good for someone that, you know, generally you wouldn't think Michael Scott is a, you know, like a, like a gym bro or anything. 20 something push ups is pretty good for a middle aged dude that's not all about that gym life. God, how many number nines did you order? Anyway. What happens then is that no one in the office can beat him. But too high, disqualified! Except... <laughs> oh, wow, that is adorable! Who's driven solely by his sheer willpower to overcome the odds. And he surely is defying his doctor's orders here. No rest for the sick. And it's just great. Five out of five for me. <laughs> As for the episode, see here again, I feel like I'm gonna get into some trouble with some people on this one. So I can 100% appreciate Novak's writing in this episode. Like I think I get what he's doing most of the time. And I don't find this episode very funny really at all. I smirked a lot. I was amused quite often. And I have an emotional response to Date Mike. Um, I'm gonna get you. What do you think? <sighs> I think the love for this episode comes from the one bit. Right. Hey, Michael, where have you been? Which I think puts this episode in the same category as the other major Michael Scott character episode. Great bit, but isn't reflective of the whole episode. I applaud them for leaving the office for the first time in a while, cramming all of these extras and our characters into this small space. We continue the Shrewd Triangle. We continue the Andy Aaron arc. This is not what I want my relationship to look like. And Michael gets to start his next relationship arc. If you're really interested, it is called Somehow I Manage, and there's going to be a picture of me on the cover shrugging with my sleeves rolled up. Going back to what I was saying before, the idea of most of these characters not having much agency here, things are just happening to them. And it kind of takes a little bit of the stakes out of all of this. And we're not really rooting for many of these people. Like I was rooting for Stanley in the cold opening. But overall, I give Happy Hour a three out of five. How did you learn to talk like that? The movies? I don't know. What movie? Black Snake Moan? But that's all I've got to say about Happy Hour. Thanks so much to all the awesome supporters of the channel. Names are up on the screen now. Uh, you guys rock. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Next week, we've got Secretary's Day. I want a two. I want a two, three. Only five more episodes left in season six. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.